We got Kid Superfan Maximilian to unbox our new product, Foam 2A. Last summer, we received a handwritten letter from nothing but biggest fan and aspiring designer, Maximilian. So we invited Max to our design studio to meet the team and give him the inside scoop of everything nothing. But we didn't want it to end there, so we invited him back to our workshop, this time to unbox the Foam 2A alongside the minds that dreamt it up. And boy, were our designers in for a treat, because Max was all business. Let's go see what Max thinks. Hi Max, how are you? Good, thank you. I'm great, thanks. Yeah, I guess uh, the main reason we're here is to show you the new phone. Are you excited to see it? Yeah. Yeah? Let's take a look. Uh -huh. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> this looks interesting. You like it? Yeah. Does it feel quite different to what you're expecting? Yeah, a completely new phone. Does it still feel like a nothing product? Totally. The camera element looks very interesting. From the phone too, the camera element was here, but you moved that to the center. Yeah, it's one of the key elements of the design, I think, and it was a really big decision, and it works really nicely with the rest of the design. It gives it a lot of personality and character. <laughs> it looks like a roller coaster. And what do you think about the transparency? It looks like a bit tinted with white. It's not like the phone 2, it's like completely transparent, but here you have a bit color. So there's a little bit of white pigment that we add to the transparent that cover, kind of gives it this diffused effect. What inspired you when designing and building the phone? So yeah, you can see here there's lots of kind of mood images that we've collected that help us design our products. There's a mix of old technology products, some fashion design from the 60s, but it was very futuristic and that's really fun for us to see now. Examples of how transparency has been used in the past. So yeah, it's a very big mix of inspirations, as you can see. If you imagine what's underneath here, mm -hmm. the main processor is positioned around here. Um, so that's really where all of the kind of intelligence is going on. So it kind of makes sense that that feels like there's a face because that's where the, the head is and that's where your brain would be having a bit more of a personality, a bit more of a kind of character uh, in the design. We think will really help to kind of strengthen that relationship that people have with their fans. Do you see anything actually in the um, design? Maybe a creature with some imagination you see something there. And like the buttons, why are they black? We felt like there was an opportunity to do a bit more of what we've done with some of our other Nothing products. If you think about Ear One, that actually has a mix of black and white parts. It kind of ties together the camera bezels with the buttons. Did you make a completely new design or is it based off phone too? It's a bit of both actually. This is the original design of the Nothing phone. And you can see here, it looks very similar to Phone 2A. This concept design was actually produced before Phone 1 and Phone 2 came out. And how many designs did you have and why did this design win? There would probably be hundreds or even thousands of different designs because there's so many different details for every detail. There could be different variations on that. And here is more sketchbooks where you can see some of those variations. As you can see, they're not very fancy drawings. They're, yeah. quite, they're quite rough. And that's okay, especially at this stage of the design process. Is after we do all these sketches, we move on to computer and we start working more accurately. And this is quite interesting because the different parts of the design kind of fit to a grid. And when we do this, you can be pretty confident that the design has a, has a really nice kind of balance to it. Did you face any challenges when designing the phone? In a way, every part of the phone is a challenge in some form. So for us, achieving that really precise fit between different parts and working in new materials, and we're learning more about how to work with transparency in the best way. But what's been great is that there's new kind of manufacturing processes that allow us to work with those materials in better ways. And what's your favorite part of the phone? If you can remember phone one and phone two, the transparent back kind of stops at the edge but because we're working plastics we've been able to do something which we think is really cool which is where the transparency starts to wrap around the edge so when you look at the phone from the side you even see some of the internal parts through that transparent section yeah what's your favorite parts i like the uh, camera design that's a bubble design any other questions before I hand you over to Lucy, our CMF designer? Uh, yeah, I do have also a job of us. Send us your portfolio. Hey Max, I'm Lucy. Hey. 
I'm a CMF designer here at Nothing, which is colour, material and finish. Mm -hmm. What have you been up to today so far? I got already the first look uh, of the phone 2A and it looks amazing. The phone was so light, I thought this was just a prototype for the design, but it's a functioning phone. Where do you look for inspiration? Anywhere can you can find inspiration. Sometimes when I'm walking to work, I just see like a pile of trash in the corner and it might have a really cool colour of some trash and I'll be there taking pictures of it and people think I'm completely crazy, but that's fine. How do you pick the colours of phones? Colour is really uh, a kind of personal matter. Obviously, I'm sure you have a favourite colour. Yeah. I don't have a favourite colour. It's a bit like asking who my favourite kid is. So I love all the colours equally. But for something like this, we wanted to evolve the design language that we had already developed and take it in a new kind of direction. So for nothing particularly, the sort of black and white identity is quite important. So here you can see some of the ones in the early stages of developments without their backs on. So we're looking really carefully at the levels of contrast and you know all of these really fine textures and how they're gonna look once we put the backs on them, because that also changes how they look really significantly. If you could have a phone in any colour you want, Max, what colour would it be? Like a bluish colour, like pastel blue, but also like white and the... Multicoloured? Yeah. Nice. And you? I think for me, that's a really hard question. Um, I saw an amazing old phone the other day that actually matched my jumper really well. So I'm hoping for a 90s revival of lime green. Maybe I'll get AI to do some crazy phones, but we don't know what materials they could be. They could be fluffy. Does the phone to a come also in other colors than white? We are developing some other colors for it. So watch this space for what the next nothing color is gonna be, but I think you're gonna like it. The thing that's really cool about nothing phones and our kind of design identity in general is because we have this element of transparency, we've accidentally made way more work for ourselves because if this was just a solid color, it doesn't really matter what anything looks like under there, but because we've decided to make it translucent, we have to work four times as hard to make sure every little detail that you're seeing is really, really beautiful. What type of finish does the phone have? The main finish that you understand when you look at it as a consumer is the back cover finish, which has this translucent, slightly milky colour to it. And it's also glossy, so it reflects the light really nicely. And then around the mid frame here, this has a textured finish that gives you a bit more of a grip mm -hmm. because if you're holding your phone in your hand and that was really glossy, it might feel quite slippery. So the screen has a glass finish, which obviously is super glossy. The buttons here, those are anodized aluminium. So that means that the aluminium gets like a special coating on it. And it's nice to have a kind of metal touch point so you kind of interact with that part, you get a real sense of quality to it. How do you pick the material of the phone? So for this phone, we actually tested 300 different types of material. It can take anything from six months, but actually to develop a new material completely from scratch, it can take you up to kind of four years. So we're always thinking about what's coming next and how we can bring in the newest technology to our products. And what's your favorite part of the phone? I really love the back cover. I think the kind of milky finish is really unusual. So it's really nice to see that in tech. And my favorite part is the buttons have contrast to the whole build. Yeah. It's like matte black. Hey Max, I'm Tom. Very nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Great to meet you. So what do you want to know? Happy to answer any questions that you've got. Uh, what's your job here at Nothing? We call my job experience design. I'm interested in interactions, in sound, in haptics, and also the kind of digital experiences on the phones, whether that's on the screen, via the glyphs, uh, in sound, or in haptics, so you can feel it. Are the glyphs more advanced? Yes, they are. We've actually redesigned how these are segmented. There's a higher density of LEDs, Importantly, compared to Phone 2, which I've got in my pocket, Phone 2 had 11 segments, which we used to sequence our glyph features, ringtones. We've actually only got three segments on the new device. And the reason for that is we, we want to make these features that we've managed to package on Phone 2 available to more people. So 
we've made the absolute most of each of these three segments on the new device. So if I, maybe we can compare a couple of them for fun. Uh, for example, Dolphin. Use all of the, the glyph segments. Mm -hmm. So myself and Joseph had to kind of work out how we map some of the more complicated ones. So on here. So we tried to still get that similar effect, but using only three. Mm -hmm. So that was a, quite a large amount of our work. We've had this range uh, sort of share a warmer, more slightly more friendly uh, sound. Are the gloves coming in more colors? The short answer is no. <laughs> we sort of think of them like an alphabet mm -hmm. or like hieroglyphics. And importantly, an alphabet it doesn't require colour to convey its meaning, right? It works in a monochromatic way. The glyphs thrive on being a series of sequences that you come to recognise. Maybe one of them is a friend and you can tell that they're calling. Maybe one is a colleague. As soon as you add colour to that, there's a whole other dimension and it introduces an awful lot of complexity. Of course, if you really wanted to put coloured stickers over them, there'd be nothing from stopping you from doing that. And what's your favourite part of the phone? I think my favourite part of the phone is the new cameras. I think it's quite different. I think it really sets phones away apart from the rest of the competition and kind of looks like a little owl, which I'm into. What about you? What's your favourite part? Uh, that the gloves are surrounding the camera element. Yeah, that's going to unlock all sorts of new things in the future. So that's it. How's today? Would you do it again? Of course, but I'm a busy kid. When is the next launch? The next product launch is... Cool. Good to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Lovely to meet you. You too. And I hope to see you again. Am I, is this, am I the last one? Are we... You're the last one. Okay, come on, we've got to... This will help. So again, what do you think?